can you uh, can you type in the chat box so that I would know whether you can see my screen or not? Can you see my screen? Okay, good. Now let's start. Okay, so welcome to Gurong Pinoy review session for um, English majors. This is our second live session in preparation for the licensure examination for teachers. Two people are waiting. I asked them to mute. Okay. Again, I am Professor Hiranio, Paul Hiranio, and I am your English major coach. Okay, let's start. Again, um, please allow me to stop once in a while so that I can um, admit those who want to enter. Okay, our first question. Okay, the first question. The essay was introduced in the Philippines by members of the A. Katipunan, B. Propaganda Movement, C. UP Literary Circle, B. College Editors Guild of the Philippines. Okay? Yes, this is recorded. I am recording using another application. So that when, when Zoom ends after 40 minutes, we don't have to wait for like two, three minutes. So we can, after Zoom ends, we will rejoin right away. We don't have to wait for another five minutes or so. Okay, so this is recorded. I have already given to the Guru Pinoy admin the recorded session last week. So probably uh, he, Mr. Um, Sir Ram will post the recorded session um, anytime soon, okay? Now again, the essay was introduced in the Philippines by members of the A, Katipunan, B, Propaganda Movement, C, UP, Literary Circle, D, College Editors Guild of the Philippines, or C, GP. What is your answer? How did the essay form reach the Philippine shores? Okay, I want to see your answers. Please type your answers in the chat box. Okay, you, Josh said UP Literary Circle. Some UP Literary Circle. UP talaga no? <laughs> Mas pinapaniwalaan yung ang UP. Uh, UP. <laughs> I graduated from UP, but that is not the right answer. The correct, how did, how did the essay reach the Philippine shores? Okay, let's analyze. Let's analyze. Um, let's go back to the origin of the essay form, you know, of the essay being a literary form. So where did the essay start where did it start saang saang um continente ito nagmula did it originate in the united states in Amer in the americas did it originate in in africa did it originate in asia saan po nang galing ang essay bilang literary form can you can you type your answer we will review hmm? Where did the essay start? You exactly, Josh. The essay as a literary form started in Europe, especially in what country, Josh? Or everyone can answer. Uh, yes, it started in Europe, specifically in what country? Did it start in England? Did it start in Spain? 
Did it start in Italy? Where exactly in Europe? Hmm? It started in France. Mom Helen, it started in France, right? The, ori the origin of the word essay is French, which means attempts. If you analyze the etymology, you know, etymology is the study of the origin of words. If you analyze the etymology of the word essay, it's French, which means attempts, you know, an attempt to explain, an attempt to do, right? The, and the foremost person, the foremost person as far as the origin of the essay is concerned is Michel de Montaigne, right? I will type. It's spelled M-O-N-T-A-I-G-N. Okay, yes. Some, uh, in French, it's Michel. Uh, Michel. Some people pronounce it Michel. Michael, in English, it's Michael. Michel de Montaigne, the essay. So it started in Europe. Now the question, who brought? Yes, uh, for today was, was sent to, I don't know, uh, uh, Mom Acer, um, Acer, uh, I'm using, the, probably you're using the, the brand of the laptop, Acer. Mom Acer, I gave the, today's, the question for today's session, like days ago, I think yesterday, to Sir Ram, the, the husband of Mom Meg. Because I am not part of your group chat or I'm not part of your Google Classroom. He is the one who directly transacts uh business to me so i gave it, i gave the copy to him so i assume that he posted it in your google classroom so you ito, ito po really this was uh um oh really different questionnaire i think uh, I, I i gave the questionnaire okay can you check the first question in the in your questionnaire in the, the one you're holding now can you what is the first question in the questionnaire that you are holding now what is the first question What is the logic? What, what, what is the logical fallacy? Oh, um, that. What logical fallacy is committed by the? Uh, um, that is for tomorrow. I, I. I don't know. You you check the file name. There is March for March twenty, right? Can you check the file name? There is, the label March twenty in the file name. Yes, it's for March 20, and today is March 19. So probably he made a mistake. Okay, anyway, uh, this is it. Uh, it's, not, it it's not a problem. I will, give you, I will not give the answer right away, okay? So the, please still answer and check your, your answer, okay? After I, have given, I, after I have given the question, I will not give the answer right away. I will give you time to answer then you check okay i think he he mixed up things okay so i think that's the best thing after giving you the question i will not give the answer right away yes that i will do okay so for number one okay oh i have not given you the answer for number one yet so write your answer in number one okay then you so that you would know your answer, your score later, and you can evaluate whether you have passed today's session or not. Okay, write your answer in the in your in your own paper before uh, not here. Uh, this is for discussion only, so that you will have your basis later when you count your score. 
okay? Okay, so number one, the correct answer is the propaganda movement. Okay, the propaganda movement. Okay, you know, um, it was brought to the Philippines by the members of the propaganda movement. You know, this movement was composed of educated Filipinos. Yes, you are, Jocelyn, you are correct. The propaganda movement. This was, you know, this movement was composed of educated Filipinos who studied in Europe. So they learned the structure of the essay in Europe. Remember, they studied there, especially in, in Barcelona, in Spain. So who were the members of the propaganda movement? You have Jose Rizal there. You have Graciano Lopez Haina there. You have Marcelo H. Del Pinar there. You have Mariano Ponce there. So the essay was introduced in the Philippines by members of the propaganda movement. The correct answer is letter B. Okay, now let's go to question number two. I will not give the answer right away so that you will have time to write down your answer in your answer sheet or any piece of paper that you have there. Okay, number two. Suggestopedia is a, is a language teaching method which originated in the, again, so I, I will make it a bit um, slow so that you can answer, you can digest, okay? Suggestopedia is a language teaching method which originated in the, A, 1930s, B, 1950s, C, 1970s, D, 1980s. Again, so write your answer in your answer sheet. Then I will give the answer after probably one minute or so. Okay. Suggestopedia is a language teaching method which originated in the... Okay. The correct answer is <laughs> letter C, 1970s. Suggestopedia is a language teaching method which originated in the 1970s. Okay? By Bulgarian psychologist Gheorghe Lozanov. The one who introduced the concept of Suggestopedia was Gheorghe Lozanov a Bulgarian psychologist. It means this psychologist was born in Bulgaria, a country in, in Europe, okay, 1970s. Okay, Suggestopedia is a combination of, can you type the, can you type the answer to my question? Um, Suggestopedia is a combination of two words. What are they? Two words are joined together. Okay? What do you think? Suggest? O'Brien, oh, suggest. You are correct. Suggest? Correct. Correct. Suggestion plus pedagogy. It's, I always hear people uh, pronounce pedagogy. It's pedagogy. Pedagogy. Okay, suggestion and pedagogy. Correct. Ano po? So, ano po ang ano? Ano po ang main Proposition, ano po ang main principle ng Suggestopedia? Okay, what is the main principle of Suggestopedia? Suggestopedia, the suggestion of psych psychological barriers. Okay, the suggestion of psychological barriers. In other words, anong, anong, ano pong ibig sabihin ng the suggestion of psychological bar, correct, motivation. You are correct, John. In other words, before ka magturo, remove all the psychological barriers, okay, in the mind of the student. You motivate them, correct. Ano po yung mga psychological barrier? Fear. Okay, remove fears. Pakalmahin mo sila. Motivate them. Remove anxiety. Okay, remove anxiety, remove fears, and all other psychological barriers. 
okay, that impede language learning. Lahat po ng mga factors that affect learning negatively, remove them. That is suggestophilia. So you motivate them. You are correct. You motivate them. Okay? So suggestophilia. 1970s, Bulgarian psychologist. Um, his name is Gheorghe Lozanov. Okay? Okay, Suggestopedia proposed by Gheorghe Lozanov, a Bulgarian psychologist. Now, let's go to question number three. I hope your score is two over two. <laughs> okay, please check your answer, uh, answer as we go along and check your answer as we go along. Kasi di po ninyo ito, di po binigay ito sa inyo. Mali pong file ang naibigay sa inyo. Okay, next, knowing when to start speaking. And when to start listening in a conversation is called what? Knowing? Okay. Knowing when to start speaking and when to start listening in a conversation is called what? A. Turn taking. B. Conversing. C. Communicating. D. Monopolizing. For those who are late, I think. What was given to you was a different file. Again, for those who are late, for those who entered late, the one given to you was a different file. So the solution is, I will give the question, but I will not give the answer right away. I will give you time to give your answer and then check your answer afterwards so that you would know your score. Okay? I, I, th I think, uh, uh, I hope claro po sa mga latecomers, answer as we go along kasi po maling file ang naibigay sa inyo. Knowing when to start speaking and when to start listening. In a, in a conversation is called A, turn-taking, B, conversing, C, communicating, D, monopolizing. Okay, the correct answer is, I will give time to those who came late. There are people who, ent who, who have just entered. Okay, the correct answer is turn taking. Knowing when to start speaking and when to start listening in a conversation is called turn taking. Again, those who came late, you were given a different file, just answer as we go along and check as we go along. Okay, turn taking. It only means that when one person speaks, the other listens. That is turn-taking. And then vice versa. Again, when one person speaks, the other listens. That is turn-taking. Now, let's go to question number four. I hope your score is three over three. Mm. Question number four. By the way, there are 50 questions. Try to get a score of 25 or over 25. According to Brown, 1998, there are blank major models of reading. How many models? According to Brown, A, two models, B, three models, C, four models, D, five models. Again, according to Brown, 1998, there are blank major models of reading. A, two models, C, three models, C, four models, D, five models. Okay, write your answer in your paper, then check as we go along. Again, because you are given, sorry po, I need to repeat this over and over again because there are people who just came, uh, people who have just entered, people, people who came late. Okay, according to Brown, how many models of reading are there? 1998, the, the correct answer is... Three models, letter B. Now, can you type me the three models of reading? Can you type, brother, in the chat box, the three models of reading? What are the three models of reading according to Brown? Correct. What else? One more, Brian. Top-down model. Bottom-up model. One more. Yes, Rona, top-down, you are correct. One more. I'm, I'm looking for one more model. You have mentioned top-down. Bottom-up, interactive, correct. 
Correct. Bottom up, top down model, and interactive model. Brown, 1998. Question number five. NVM Gonzalez, the happiest boy in the world, is a story of A, a man who lost his job. I hope this is familiar to you. B, graft and corruption in the government. C, sacrifice made by his father and his son. Larry D, a young boy who started working in the city at an early age. Okay? And B, M. Gonzalez, the happiest boy in the world, is a story of A, a man who lost his job. B, graft and corruption in the government. C, sacrifice made by his father and his son. D, a young boy who started working in the city at an early age. There are a lot of let questions about Philippine literature in English uh, uh, stories, uh, short stories in Philippine literature in English that, that are unfamiliar to you. Madami pong lumabas sa let na hindi na hindi pa familiar yung, uh, yung, yung istorya sa inyo. Short stories in English written by Filipino writers in English. A lot. And the, uh, the title of the story, of the short story here is The Happiest Boy in the World, written by NVM Gonzalez. It's a story of what? Okay, the correct answer is the story of, of sacrifice made by his father and his son. NVM Gonzalez. NVM Gonzalez is Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez. NVM. He was our national artist for literature in 1997. NVM Gonzalez was our national artist for literature in 1997. And he wrote the short story, The Happiest Boy in the World, which talks about the sacrifice made by his father and his son. Okay? Okay, let's talk about this particular short story. A man, one of the happiest boy in the world, a man writes a letter of inquiry to his landlord. The letter is about his son who wants to go to school. He is hoping that the landlord who he considered as compadre agrees to accept his son as a boarder in order to attend school. Okay, so that is the essence. That is the summary of the short story, The, the Happiest Boy in the World, written by National Artist for Literature, NVM Gonzalez. Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez. Okay? Now let's go to question number uh, uh, some more information. They are very poor and the circumstances are against him. Okay, now let's go to question number six. Mozart blank composing at the age of five. A starts composing at the age of five. B has started composing at the age of five. C start had started composing at the age of five. D started composing at the age of five what is the answer this is a question on verb tenses Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart started a starts composing at the age of five B has started composing at the age of five C had started composing at the age of five D started composing at the age of five what is the answer a question on verb tenses Okay? Okay, now you answer my question. Where is he now? Where is Mozart now? Sana po siya. Can you, you, you please, type your, uh, please type your answer in the chat box. Sana po. Si Correct, Brian. He, he's dead. Exactly, he is dead. Why did it, why did, uh, excuse me. Madami pong ano, gustong mag-enter. Okay? Now, 
Jocelyn, why did I ask where Mozart is right now? Because, sabi niyo, patay na siya. Pag patay na siya, therefore, anong tense ang gagamitin? Patay na siya. He's not around anymore. He's dead. Anong tense? Kasi patay na siya. Past tense. Exactly. So, an saan dito? Anong choice ang past tense? Letter D. Started. Correct. Started. So, Mozart started composing at the age of five. Now, please answer my question. Anong tense po ang option A? Starts. I do. Anong tense po ang option A? Simple present tense. Not just present, but simple present tense. Correct. How about option B? Anong tense? Option B. You are correct. Simple present tense. Ang option B, anong tense? Option B, has started. Anong tense po yon? Answers please. For Josh, it's present perfect Josh, not perfect perfect. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, typographical error. No, no worries. Okay, correct. Has started is present perfect tense. How about option D? Anong tense? Option D. Had started. Had plus PP. Past participle started. Letter C. Ano pong tense? Past perfect tense. Past perfect. Past perfect tense. Okay, so the answer here. Okay, the answer here is letter D. Started. Now let's go to question number seven. Again, for those who are late, for those who came, who just entered, iba pong file ang naibigay sa inyo. Just answer as we go along and check your answer as we go along as well. Okay, question number seven. Don't be surprised if you are holding a different kind of file. Okay? The solution is just answer as we go along. I will give you time anyway to answer. Now, question number seven. Which of the following should not be considered in choosing an issue or topic for a position paper? This is writing a position paper. And I hope you know what a position paper is. Okay, A, the issue should be current. B, the issue should be debatable. C, the issue should be general. D, the issue should be relevant. The question is, should not be considered negative. Should not be considered in choosing an issue or topic for a possession paper. Okay, what is your answer? I will give the time to answer. Which should not be considered in choosing an issue or topic for a position paper, A, the issue should be current. B, the issue should be debatable. C, the issue should be general. D, the issue should be relevant. Okay? Number, that's number seven. Okay. Um, a position paper is like a debate, right? Only that it is in a written form. Debate is oral. Parang debate po yun. You have to make you have to choose a side, right? You have to take a side. For example, legal, uh, for example, legalization of divorce. Are you in favor or are you against the legalization of divorce? So you have so you you write a position paper to defend your side. So the correct answer is letter C. The issue should be general. It should not be considered. Okay? In choosing a topic, it must be current. It must be relevant. It must be debatable. Okay? What do you mean by debatable? Debatable means we can argue about it. Okay? Uh, the issue should be general. No, uh, we don't like general topics in, we don't like, 
Romeo, um, ano po yung answer sa question? Uh, yes, uh, don't worry. Romeo, I will, we will go back later, okay? And anyway, this will be posted as well in your um, Google Classroom or in your group chat. Yes, we will review later when Zoom ends and when we, re when we have rejoined after, okay? General topics such as death, right, such as beauty are not used in writing a possession paper now let's go to question number eight communication is a process means that a communication has clear beginning and ending points b communication resembles still pictures more than motion pictures c communication is ongoing and continuous Letter D, communication consists of discrete and separate acts. Okay, what do you mean by the concept of communication as a process? Okay, choose your answer from among the options. I will give you time. We have three minutes before Zoom ends, then please rejoin. Okay, I think you have already posted your answer. Um, the correct answer is letter C. The correct answer is letter C. Communication is a process and it means that communication is ongoing and continuous. Letter C. Process means still going on and continuous. Communication is a process. It does not end, right? For example, A and B are talking. A is the speaker. B is the listener. When A asks B something, A is the speaker and B is the listener. And when B replies, okay, B becomes the speaker and A becomes the listener. So it's an ongoing process. You know, it's, it's a cycle. It's ongoing and it's continuous. So communication as a process means that communication is ongoing and continuous. Now let's go to question number nine. It says here, we only have two minutes left. It refers, this is very easy. It refers to a reader's background knowledge. A, persona. B, schema. C, intelligence. D, wisdom. Again, it refers to a, first, to a reader's background knowledge. A, persona. B, schema. C, intelligence. D, wisdom. What is the correct answer? Your background knowledge or your stock knowledge, right? It means what you already know before reading a text. What you already know before reading a text. That's your background knowledge. And that is what we call your schema, letter B. So number nine, the correct answer is B, schema, your background knowledge. So schema is a reader's background knowledge. It is all the information a, pers a person knows. The people you know, the places you have been, the experiences you have had, the books you have read. All of this is your schema. Anytime soon, Zoom will end. Please rejoin. Okay, it says I only have a minute left before it ends. Let's just wait for it before we move to the next number. Okay, um, just, let's just have like a one minute break.
ไปโอเคเดี๋ยวแชร์ไมค์สกรีนส่วนสกีมาสองคนกำลังรอเดินโอเคโอเค let's continue so the correct answer is schema your background knowledge now let's go to question number ten can you hear me can you see my screen please tell me so Let me, okay, good. Okay. Question number 10. In traditional poetry, poems are A, recited, B, written down, C, both A and B, both recited and written down, or letter D, neither A nor B. Not recited, not written down. Again, in traditional poetry, Poems are A, recited, B, written down, C, both A and B, D, neither A nor B. Okay, I'm giving you time to figure out the answer. Then I will give you the right answer. Two people are waiting. I really need to study to figure out how to pass the hosting to someone and at the same time allow uh, uh, um, allow me to present my screen because I'm having a hard time discussing and accepting those who want to enter okay mute all okay so the correct answer is in traditional poetry poems are a recited b written down c both a and b b neither a nor b the correct answer is letter a recited in traditional poetry poems are recited what does it mean this is number 10 right well poems are meant to be heard Again, poems are meant to be heard. So, in traditional poetry, they are recited. That is why there are sound patterns. We have rhymes. You know, we have alliterations. We have um, assonance. We have different literary devices that have something to do with the sound patterns. Para magandang pakinggan because poems are meant to be recited. Okay? So, what are some of the examples of traditional poems? We have epics, we have ballads. In because I I I, I live in Iloilo City in the island uh, on the island of Panay, we have our epic here, Hinila Wood, right? And in Hinila Wood, there are chanters, you no know, people who who are trained to chant uh, this particular epic poem. Okay, epic. Epics are forms of traditional poetry and they are meant to be heard okay they are meant to be recited chant when you say chanting you recite you recite it with sound effects okay so the correct answer is in traditional poetry poems are recited now let's go to question number 11 what is the other term for the direct method of language instruction 
what is the other term for the direct method of language instruction? Okay, you know, uh, the different methods and approaches in language teaching are favorite items in the lab. And this is my, this is my specialization because my, my master's degree is ESL, uh, teaching English as a second language. What is the other term for the direct method of language instruction? What is your answer? A, original method. B, natural method. C, linguistic method. D, instructional method. What is the correct answer? Can you type your answer? Uh, there, sorry. Hmm? Linguistic method? The other term for the direct method of language instruction. Some more answers, please. B, instructional. B, linguistic. Helen said, Angelica said, letter D, instructional. This is number 11. Okay, the correct answer is the other term for the direct method of language instruction is the natural method, letter B natural method okay now please answer some of my questions about the natural method or the direct method of language teaching okay direct method or natural method of language teaching is used to teach what okay this particular kind of language teaching method is used to teach what um, first language second language or some other forms or some other some other kinds of language that you want to acquire or you want to learn second language again for those who are late because you are holding a different kind of file please answer as we go along and check as we go along as well okay first language Venus mm, Brian Second language, not quite. The correct answer is you use this kind of method to learn a foreign language. Hello there, wants to enter. Okay, foreign. <laughs> foreign language. Foreign. Foreign language. Not second language, but foreign language. There are differences. EFL, correct, Brian. Very correct. Sorry, again, sorry, I have to stop once in a while to accept those who are entering. Um, when you say foreign language, like Filipinos, we, use, we don't use a direct method because we're not learning English as a foreign language. We're, we are learning English as a second language, right? Like, for example, in China, in China, people there in China learn English not as a second language but as a foreign language. So the direct method is a popular method there, or the natural method, EFL, correct. English, English, well, Brian, are you in Thailand right now? Are you in Thailand? Oh, wh where exactly in Thailand? Bangkok, Chiang Mai? Uh, yeah, there are a lot of Filipino English teachers in Thailand. Okay, I have been to Thailand like three times. Uh, it's a beautiful country. But anyway, so the natural method. In the direct method, okay, I have um, some, some more questions about the direct method. I hope you can answer in the chat box. In the direct method, sorry, someone wants to enter. Wait. Okay, in the direct method, are you allowed to are you allowed to use your first language like Filipinos teaching English using the direct method as a teacher are you allowed to use Filipino your your first language in teaching English exactly no you are not allowed you are not allowed to use your first language in teach uh, using the direct method approach uh, the direct method or the direct approach we only use the target language. We only use English. Now let's go to the next question. 
Question number 12. Which of the following sentences contains a verb that shows a condition? Wait. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. You did not see the correct answer. I can hear some sound. Which of the following sentences contains a verb that shows a condition? A. He gave me his report card. B. He will not pass the test. C. He is in jail. D. He has studied his lesson. Verb that shows a condition of something or someone. What is the correct answer? Which of the following sentences contains a verb that shows a condition? A. He gave me his passport. B. Uh, his report card, rather. B. He will not pass the test. C. He is in jail. D. He has studied his lesson. Please write your correct, please write your answer in the chat box. Yes, medyo maingay. Wait. Okay, the correct, the correct answer is, I cannot check who is responsible for that sound because my, my screen is full. Okay? He will not pass the test. The correct answer is letter B. Okay. Letter A, let's analyze. This is question number 12. Let's analyze. When you say condition, Okay, wait. Wait, wait. I will mute all. Okay, there. Okay, no more sound. Okay. When you say condition, it is something that does not show any action. So letter A is wrong because gave, the verb gave shows an action, right? Letter D is also wrong because study studied has studied okay study as a verb shows an action so you have to choose now between b or c now my question is c is that a condition he is in jail when you say condition the state of something the circumstances affecting the way in which something exists so the correct answer is b why because well letter c is more of a location location rather than a condition so he will not pass the test is the correct answer now let's go to question number 13. philippine literature in english in Kerima Polotan Tovera's short story, there is a teenager in the house. Who is telling the story about the teenager? A. The teenager's parent. B. The teenager's brother. C. The teenager's house helper. D. The teenager's grandmother. What is the correct answer? This is Philippine literature in English. In Kerima Polotan Tovera's short story there is a teenager in the house who is telling about who is telling the story about the teenager a the teenager's parent b the teenager's brother c the teenager's house helper d the teenager's grandmother i hope this story is familiar to you okay what is the correct answer you know if if a story is not familiar to you just make use of the clues that you can find within the question itself right teenager who might be telling the story about him right okay the correct answer is letter a the teenager's parent this is question number 13. okay parent okay make a guess parent specifically what his mother or his father based on the whatever clue you can get within the within the story within the story mother exactly mother you are correct by the way uh, the author kerima polotan tobera 
was a Filipino fiction writer, essayist, and journalist, and she was born in Holo Sulu. She is a Minda she was a Mindanawan. She's from Holo Sulu. Terima Polotan Tovera. Three people are waiting outside. Okay, wait. Mute all. Okay. It talks about a mother who does not know what to do with her son who is now a teenager. Why, according to her, uh, his, uh, her son is now very difficult to deal with now that he is a teenager. Now he is, uh, he is rude. Admit. Okay, now he is rude. He is arrogant and he is and he lacks respect. So in a way, he feels uh, she feels that her son is already a stranger. Rude, arrogant, lack of respect. There, uh, uh, we have here some lifted lines from the story, from the short story. Let me read these lines. There's a teenager in my house. Until a few years ago, he was my son. But when he turned 13, he also became this, this tall stranger with new pimples around his nose and an insolence in his manners. Remember how the mother describes the son, insolence in his manners. What do you mean by insolent? Some, an insolent person is arrogant. An insolent person is proud. An insolent person lacks respect. Okay. Again, the title of the story is There's a Teenager in the House by Terima Polotan Tobera. Now let's go to question number 14. Hearing and listening are two different things. No? They are different. Hearing is A, passive, B, active. See both A and B. Letter D, neither A nor B. What is the correct answer? Hearing and listening are different. Hearing is A, passive, B, active. C, both A and B. D, neither A nor B. Please write your answer in the chat. Uh, please write your answer in the chat box. Okay, the correct answer is Letter A, hearing is passive. Let me check the chat box. Okay, most of you answered that letter A, passive. Passive, why? Because hindi po, hindi po siya intentional. Hindi sinadya. No? Na, narinig mo lang, right? There is, there is no effort on the part of the person, right? Hearing is passive, hearing is involuntary, hearing is unintentional. This in a job. It does not require focused attention. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng passive? Hearing is a passive act. Passive means you just accept things without taking any action. On the other hand, listening is active, right? intentional in listening there is an effort to understand okay now let's go to question the correct answer is letter a passive now let's go to question number 15. aside from biography there is also a, liter a literary text that narrates real life experiences known as a allegory b fable c parable the anecdote what is the correct answer? Aside from biography, there is also a literary text that narrates real-life experiences known as A, allegory, B, fable, 
C, parable, the anecdote. What is the correct answer? Write your answer in the chat box. <clears throat> okay, Venus said letter D, anecdote. Annabelle said letter D, anecdote. Jocelyn also answered letter D. Okay, the correct answer is letter D, anecdote. Anecdote is a short, amusing, or interesting story about a real incident or person. Wala. Shiner, may nangyari sa'yo kanina sa 7-Eleven. Remember the viral, um, the, the, the viral post of Valentine Rosales? About yung nangyari sa kanya sa 7-Eleven? That is an example of, you know, a modern-day anecdote. Okay? Well, nangyari lang sa kanya sa 7-Eleven, shinare niya sa Facebook, yun lang. Okay? It narrates real-life experiences. So, anecdote. What is allegory? Allegory is a story with a hidden meaning. Kunyari, ito ang story. Pero, sa totoo, iba ang gustong iparating. That is an, an allegory. A story with a hidden meaning. Yung, yung, ano, yung, yung Len Len, yung Len Len series ni Daryl Yap, that is an, that is an example of, you know, modern allegory. Story ni Len Len, pero, may ibang meaning, Right? There is a hidden meaning. That is, an ex that is an example of an allegory. Now let's go to question number 16. I hope your score is 15 over 15. Which of the following should be done when summarizing? A. Writing down all ideas of the text. B. Writing down one's personal ideas of, wait, of the text. C, writing down ideas that are not stated in the text. And letter D, writing down useful information from the text. Summarizing, ladies and gentlemen. This is question number 16. So when you say summary, this is a synthesis of the key ideas. Remember, hindi lahat ng ideas, only key ideas, only important ideas, only useful information. So the correct answer is letter D. Writing down useful information from the text. Summarizing. Now let's go to question number 17. Which of the following sentences contains a gerund? Okay? A. I don't know why some people pronounce it Jeron. Uh, I prefer to pronounce it Jeron. Which of the following sentences contains a Jeron? A. She's having a shower right now. B. I am planning to sue Therese. C. We were having dinner when Tom arrived. Yes, letter D. Teaching might satisfy his desire for new experiences. Okay, what is your answer? Which of the following sentences contains a gerund? Okay, answers please. I want to see your answers in the chat box. Josh said letter D, teaching might satisfy his desire for new experiences. Kathleen said letter D. Jill, letter D. Annabelle, letter B. Okay. Okay, gerunds always end in what structure? Please answer in the chat box. Gerunds, correct. I-N-G, in. Okay. And gerunds function as what? Yes, gerunds function as what? Nouns, correct. Okay, let's check. Let's choose the option here that shows gerund. A gerund functioning as a noun. Letter A, 
having a shower verb right naliligo verb planning to sew theories verb that i see having dinner kumakain verb and that i did teaching might satisfy what will satisfy teaching noun so the correct answer is letter d Okay, number 18. Language teaching method. Again, ladies and gentlemen, the grammar translation method is a method of teaching foreign languages derived from the classical method of teaching A, English and French, B, Greek and Latin, C, Spanish and Portuguese, that are the national and vernacular languages. Again, the grammar translation method is a method of, of teaching foreign languages derived from the classical method of teaching A, English and French, B, Greek and Latin, C, Spanish and Portuguese, B, national and vernacular languages. Okay, answers please. Vina said, letter B, Greek and Latin. Michelle said, a, English and French. Hello there, said. A, English and French. Hmm? What is your clue in the question itself? What is your clue? What is your clue? That's question number 18. The clue, the clue is in the question itself. It's in the stem itself. Correct, Brian. Classical method. And what are the two classical languages? What are the two classical languages? Of course, Greek and Latin. Exactly. Greek and Latin. Letter B. Grammar translation method. Classwork is highly structured with a teacher controlling all activities so it's okay grammar translation method is it student centered or teacher centered what kind of instruction is it is it teacher centered or yes teacher centered teacher controlling everything the method focuses on the literature and grammar wait i cannot see my te the text the literature and grammar of the target language with passages being translated into and from the modern tongue. Co consequently, it tends to be very much text-based. And typically, the teacher gives instructions and gram grammatical explanations in the modern tongue. In other words, in other words, the teacher teaches grammar in English and what language is used in explaining the lesson what what uh, what language is used in explaining the lesson for example the lesson is of course english and what language is used in explaining uh, the grammatical points native yeah the yung lesson po english ang explanation tagalog filipino in our case Hiligaynon or Ilonggo. Okay, that's grammar translation method. Sa direct method po, sa direct method, yung lesson English, yung explanation po, anong language? Sa direct method, English din. Lesson English, explanation English. Pero sa grammar translation method, lesson English, explanation Filipino, pag nasa Pilipinas. Right? Okay. Question number 19. The details in Maria's essay are arranged in the order in which they happen. It says here, 10 minutes left. Okay, again, the details in Maria's essay are arranged in the order in which they happen. What type of paragraph development does she employ? A. Order of importance, B, comparison or contrast, C, chronological order, B, order of importance. I'm sorry, you have two order of importance in the choices. But 
Never mind that. Okay? What type of paragraph development is at play here? The details in the essay are arranged in the order in which they happen. Oh, what happened first? What happened next? What happened last? Ano pong method of paragraph development ang ginamit? Ni Maria. This is question number 19. Okay, the correct answer is that we see chronological order. What do you mean by paragraph development? Okay? Kung, when you say paragraph development po, kung paano mo buuin o sulatin ang iyong paragraph. There are many ways, right? There's comparison and contrast. There's chronological order. There's order of importance, right? When you say chronological order from start to finish. So for example, I want to, to write about the life of Rizal. So, Pag chronological order, ang ginamit kong method, probably I will start from the birth of Rizal and I will end sa kanyang pagkamatay. That's chronological order. Now let's go to question number 20. It refers to the formal arrangement of rhymes in a stanza or a poem. Again, it refers to the formal arrangement of rhymes in a stanza or a poem. A, rhyme effect. B, rhyme plan. C, rhyme order. D, rhyme scheme. What is your answer? Write your answer in the chat box. Are you also noting your score? Are you taking note of your score? Okay, yes refers to the formal arrangement of rhymes in a stanza or a poem. A, rhyme effect. B, rhyme plan. C, rhyme order. D, rhyme scheme. The correct answer is rhyme scheme. Letter D, rhyme scheme. A pattern of rhymes at the end of each line of a poem or song. What are usually used? Can you ask, uh, please answer me in the chat box. What are usually used to indicate rhyme schemes? Ano po yung ginagamit to indicate rhyme schemes? Symbols? XXX? Ano po yung ginagamit? Letters. Yes, correct, Brian. Letters. So, example, AB, AB, or ABBA, ABBA, rhyme scheme. Correct. Letters po. I think you will all pass the lip. <laughs> You're all smart kids. Question number 21. Andres, this is a question on tenses, verb tenses. Andres blank canes and fans. That is his main source of income. Gumagawa po siya ng mga abaniko Baston, no? Andres, Blanc, Canes, and Fans. That is his main source of income. That is his job. A, made. C, has made. C, is making. D, makes. What is the correct answer? This is question number 21. What tends... Okay, what tense is required here? What tense? It's simple present tense. I do, right? You do it every day. I do. You do it every day. That is his job. He makes canes and fans. He, he makes, she makes, he makes. Present, simple present tense. We use this structure for things that you, you always do, right? For things that always happen, like the sun rises in the east and sets in the west every day, right? So the correct answer is letter D, makes. Number 22. Which of the following short stories talks about 
a family, a Filipino family ritual. A, footnote to youth by Jose Garcia Villa. B, as long as the grass shall grow by Carlos Bolosan. C, love in the corn husks by Ida Rivera Horn. D, the mats by Francisco Arceliana. Ang, ang topic po ng short story na ito ay ang ritual ng isang pamilyang Filipino. Anong ritual? It's about um, remembering your dead loved ones. Remembering your dead loved ones. Okay, the correct answer, yes, you are correct. The maths by Francisco Arceliana. This is number 22. Francisco Arceliana was a Filipino writer, poet, essayist, critic, journalist, and teacher. He was our national artist for literature. And this story is about remembering our lost loved ones. It's about deep family ties. What is the story all about? Uh, yung story po, Imagine, um, bumili po siya ng, ano, ng mga banig, no, Max. Bumili po siya ng mga banig, Max. Pero, yung mga kasamahan niya sa bagay, kasamahan, kasamahan niya sa bahay, we're wondering, bakit po sobrang, uh, sobra, um, there were three extra mats. May, may sobra po na tatlong mats. Para po sa, Kanino? Para, para po kanino yung, yung sobrang ano, max na dinala niya o binili niya? For example, lima lang sila sa bahay, lima, uh, lima lang sila sa bahay, pero eight po yung binili. Para po kanino yung three extra max? That's just an example. I'm not sure about the numbers, but that's the essence. That's the, that's the essence of the story. Para po kanino? Can you answer? Can you answer your, my question in the chat box? Para po kanino yung extra mats na tatlo? Correct. Sa tatlong sa tatlong anak niya na babae na namatay. Correct. For those for her for his three daughters who died when they were younger. Correct. Imagine kahit patay na ang tatlong anak, binilhan pa din niya ng banig. Marcelina's father comes home from a trip to Manila with beautiful handmade sleeping mats for each member of his large family, including the three daughters who died when they were young. Okay, the mats. It, it's about a Filipino ritual, you know, remembering the dead loved ones. Question number 23. You blank television. You should do something more active. A, you are always watching. B, you always watch. C, you have always watched. B, you were always watching. What is the correct answer? By the way, it says here, I only have one minute left before Zoom ends. Please rejoin. Uh, you know the drill. Zoom will end anytime soon. Please rejoin. Let's just wait for Zoom to end so that we can discuss this in full when we return, when we rejoin. Time check, it's 7.25. We still have around 35 minutes, I guess, yeah.
When is your exam? Kailan po yung ulit? <laughs> sa June, sa June po ba yung let? Or September? Next Sunday? Oh, really? Okay. There. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen now? I did, okay. Participants waiting outside. Mute all. Mute all. Okay. Okay. Okay, what is you, okay. What is your answer here? You blank TV. You should do something more active. A, you are always watching. B, you always watch. C, you have always watched. D, you are always watching. This is question number 23. Okay, the, the form here is I do. I do form always, you know. This is used to talk about, to, uh, this is used to state. Uh, wait, some, somebody's, please mute your microphone. Okay, I do form used to state that something uh, that you always do something, right? Um, I do is present, simple present, or present simple. Now let's analyze. Let's analyze uh, the structure because this is not a simple I do form. This is a bit tricky. Um, look at the situation. Is that positive or negative? You blank TV. You should do something more active. Is this positive? Or negative? Negative, correct. Exactly negative. Wait. Exactly. Jocelyn, negative. Now, the speaker here is annoyed. The speaker here is annoyed. It means that it is too often and more often than normal. If this is the case, you, you use I am doing something with always. Because normally, with always, you use I do. But if it is too often and more often than normal, and the speaker here is already annoyed, then you use the I am doing. So the correct answer is? You are always watching, letter A. That is the correct answer. Correct answer is letter A. You are always watching. I hope you, you have understood my explanation. This is always here means too often. And it already has a negative connotation. Now let's go to question number 24. What are the two general types of interview? A, short interview and long interview. B, open interview and closed interview. C, oral interview and written interview. 
the structured interview and unstructured interview. What is the correct answer? What are the two general types of interview? This is question number 24. Okay, what are the two general types of interview? The correct answer is letter D, structured interview and unstructured interview. The two general types of interview are the structured interview and the unstructured interview. Okay, let me ask you some questions about this particular topic. Kindly answer me in the chat box. Which is more formal, structured interview or unstructured interview? Which is more formal? Correct, structured. Which is more flexible? Which is more flexible? Unstructured interview, correct. Which type gives advanced questions? Which type gives advanced questions? Advanced question? Meron pong advanced question structured. Correct. Structured. Pag may advanced question structured. Which does not have a fixed format? No fixed format. Structured or unstructured? Unstructured. Correct. Anin po dito? Okay, correct. Anin po dito ang pwedeng baguhin ang questions? Depende sa sagot ng interviewee. Pwedeng baguhin, correct? Pag pwedeng baguhin ang question, depende sa sagot ng interviewee, unstructured po iyon. Correct. Now, let's go to question number 25. Audio lingualism as a method of language instruction is inspired by A. Humanism B. Essentialism C. Behaviorism. D. Constructivism. Audio lingualism as a method of language instruction is inspired by A. Humanism. B. Essentialism. C. Behaviorism. D. Constructivism. This is question number 25. What is your answer? Audio lingualism is inspired by a. Humanism. B. Essentialism. C. Behaviorism. D. Constructivism. Okay, the correct answer is letter C. Behaviorism. Behaviorism. Behaviorism is stimulus response. Stimulus response. Stimulus response. Paulit-ulit. Repetition. And ganyan din po sa audio lingualism. Paulit-ulit. Right? Okay, ano y for, can you give me some examples na ginagawa ng teacher na paulit-ulit? Because behaviorism is paulit-ulit eh. Repetition. Oh, give me some activities na pina pinapagawa ng teacher or ginagawa ng teacher na paulit-ulit. To show that indeed, audio lingualism is inspired by behaviorism. Drills, correct. Drills. Or... What else? Aside from drills. Or the teacher, the teacher tells the student, repeat after me. Okay, correct, Brian. We, we think the same way, Brian. Naunahan mo lang ako sa pagtay. Okay, class, repeat after me. Vacation. So, ano, ano, ano yung sagot ng klase? Vacation. Oh, repetition. Audiolingualism. Behaviorism. Correct. Or, paulit-ulit na test. Test, retest, test, retest. Okay. Behaviorism. Question number 26. Which of the following cannot be considered in evaluating sources? This is um, thesis writing or this is writing uh, um, scholarly journals, scholarly articles. Which of the following cannot be considered in evaluating sources? A, I'm oh, sorry, A, accuracy, B, affiliation, C, currency, D, relevance. What is the correct answer? When you evaluate your sources, 
whether it's credible, whether it can be used as your main source, as your secondary source in writing your thesis, your research paper, ano po yung hindi pwedeng ikonsidera? Okay? Is it accuracy, the affiliation, the currency, the relevance? Correct answer is affiliation. Ano po, ano po yung ibig sabihin ng affiliation? Affiliation means, you are, are you related to an organization? Are you related to a school? Are you related to a movement, a society, a certain cultural group? That's affiliation and we don't consider that in evaluating sources, right? So what if affiliated siya sa isang grupo? As long as credible naman siya. Pwedeng gamitin sources, right? Accuracy means accurate. Is the source accurate? Yes. We consider that. Let us see current. That's why some professors require their students to use only sources that are 10 years old. Um, and sources that are beyond 10 years old are not allowed, are not accepted. Right? In your in your chapter 2, review, uh, RRL, Review of Related Literature, currency, dapat current, and relevance. Now, let's go to question number 27. Who wrote the short story, A Christmas Gift? A. Angela Manalang Gloria. B. Carmen Guerrero Napil. C. Estrella Alfon. D. Pilar Hidalgo. Who wrote the short story, A Christmas Gift? A. Angela Manalang Gloria. B. Carmen Guerrero Napil. C. Estrella Alfon. D. Pilar Hidalgo. The correct answer is A Christmas Gift. Pilar Hidalgo. Letter D. There's not much information about Pilar Hidalgo. Um, aside from her being a civic leader and a Filipina educator, okay? A Christmas Gift by Pilar Hidalgo. It came out in the left. 28. Sometimes, um, left questions are really unexpected. Imagine. Uh, I think 2017, 2018, maraming questions about Indian literature. Na, I don't know. <laughs> Never heard of items. So, you cannot expect talaga kung anong um, lalabas sa let. That's why napakahi, napakahirap ang top ang English major sa let. Because napaka-vast, napaka-wide ng scope ng ng language at sa literature. Unlike math na fixed formula lang. Number 28, which of the following sentences contains an intransitive verb? A. Justin threw the ball. B. Mona called Anna last night. C. Johan cooks adobo often. D. Robin plays hard. Okay, which of the following sentences contains an intransitive verb. So you have to differentiate an intransitive verb from a transitive verb. This is question number 28. Intransitive verbs do not need an object to complete its thought. Okay? Again, intransitive verbs do not need an object. Okay? So A does uh, Dustin threw the ball. You have the ball. When you say Dustin threw, uh, it's incomplete, right? Uh, you need the direct object ball here to complete the thought. Let there be Mona called Anna last night. If you remove Anna, Mona called what? Who? Right? Incomplete thought. So you need Anna here to complete it. So Johan cooks what? Adobo. Adobo is... Your object here. And Larry D. Robin plays hard. So you don't need an object here to complete the thought. The correct answer is letter D. Hard here functions as what? Hard here is an adverb. 
Okay? Yes, the, the pattern. What is the pattern here? Can you give me the pattern, the sentence pattern in letter B? Place is intransitive verb. What is the sentence pattern here in option D? Options A, B, and C, the, the, the pattern is STVDO, subject, transitive verb, direct object. How about letter D? What is the sentence pattern at play here? Hmm? Answers, please. The sentence pattern is S I V A or S I V, um, subject and transitive verb. A is your adverb, adverb of manner. It's adverb of manner. Hard is manner. Okay, now let's go to question number 29. Informing reports, A, discuss advantages and disadvantages, B, suggest changes, C, make judgments, B, present data. Inform, inform, information reports, informing report, what is the answer? Answer, are you still there? Do you still have all the energy to finish this? Okay, good. Okay, the correct answer is letter D, present data, inform. Number 30. Tomorrow, A, will be Wednesday. C, is going to be Wednesday. C, is Wednesday. D, would be Wednesday. What is the correct answer? Number 30. This is a question, again, related to tenses, future tense. It's question number 30. For fixed schedules, for fixed schedules, we don't use will. We don't say tomorrow will be Wednesday. This is a fixed schedule. Like tomorrow, my class will start at 11. That is wrong English. Tomorrow, my class starts at 11. For fixed schedule, you use I do, not I will do. So the correct answer is letter C. Tomorrow is Wednesday. We don't say tomorrow will be Wednesday or tomorrow is going to be Wednesday. We don't say that. Now let's go to question number 30, 31. This is very easy. It is the use of vivid description. Usually rich in sensory words to create mental pictures or images. In the reader's mind okay without without the choices can you give me the correct answer correct answer oh a imagery b symbolism c hedging b contraction correct answer is imagery what is contraction when you when you say contraction you join two words together like do not the contracted form is do, will not, want. That is contraction. So imagery in the scarlet letters. Here. Wait. Love, whether newly born or aroused from a death-like slumber, must always create sunshine, filling the heart so full of radiance that it overflows upon the outward world. So this is an example of imagery that you can find in Nathaniel Hawthorne's discarded letter. You know, you know, this creates vivid images of love. This is question number 31. Yeah. Thirty-two. I Teach My Child is a poem by Hemino Abad, which tells us, A, that children must go to school, B, about the nature of preschool wait, education, C, that what parents can and cannot do for their children, we are ready to send our children to go to, to good school. What is the correct answer? I Teach My Child is a poem by Hemino Abad, which tells us, what is the correct answer? Okay, the correct answer is letter C, what parents can 
and cannot do for their children. Hemeno Abad is a Cebuano literary critic. I have here some lifted lines from I Teach My Child. I teach my child to survive. I begin with our words, the simple words first and last. They are hardest to learn. Words like home or friend or to forgive. These words are relations. They are difficult to bear. Their fruits are unseen or words that promise or dream. So I teach my child by Hemeno Aban. Now let's go to question number 33. I hope you are still okay. Teacher Anna believes that the whole being needs to be engaged in learning a language. What language teaching approach is at play here? Okay, write your answer without any choices. Let's see. If you have mastered your language teaching approaches. Mm. Teacher Anna believes that the whole being needs to be engaged. Hindi lang po, hindi lang po uta, pati po puso, whole being. Ang dapat engaged in learning a language. What language teaching approach is at play here? Holistic? Josh, is there such a thing as holistic language teaching approach? There's none. Ano po yung effective? It only, uh, it means that lahat po ng aspeto ng pagkatao ng bata ay engaged. Hindi lang po mind, pati po heart. <laughs> First letter, H. H. Josh. Whole language? Holistic? Hmm? Holistic approach? There is no such thing as holistic approach in language teaching. Holistic is the description but not the name of the approach. Hmm? Okay, some more? Okay, sige. I will give the choices. A, humanistic approach. B, communicative language teaching approach. C, suggestopedia. D, the silent way. What is the correct answer? Correct. Humanistic approach. Okay, in the humanistic approach, which is more important? The subject matter, the strategy, or the learner itself? Okay, what is the answer? Sa humanistic approach, ano yung pinaka-importante? The subject matter, the strategy, or ang tao mismo, ang learner mismo, the learner, human, human you know, humanistic approach. Okay? Okay, another question. Another question. In the humanistic approach, which is more superior? Which is more superior? The knowledge or the feelings? The mind or the heart? In the humanistic approach, which is more superior? Knowledge or feelings? 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 Both. Josh, you are correct. Both. They should go hand in hand. Hand in hand. Both. Correct. Both. Hand in hand. Because not only the mind, but also the heart. It means both. Question number 34. In questions answerable by yes, this is a lead question. In questions answerable by yes or no, blank is used. A. Falling intonation. B. Rising intonation. C. Both A and B. Not a D, neither A nor B. What is the answer? In, in a yes or no question, what do you use? Falling intonation or rising intonation or both or none of them? What is the correct answer? Yes or no question. For example, is she here? Oh, that, that is a yes or no question. Is she here? Is Manila the capital of the Philippines? Did Anne answer well? Oh, what is the intonation here? Because th this is a yes-no question. 
Okay, the correct answer is rising intonation, correct. In the rising intonation, the pitch of the voice rises over time. Question number 35. It is a speech that praises and focuses on the good deeds done by a dead loved one. Okay? Or oh, without the choices, give me the correct answer. It is a speech. Do not Google your answer. Do not Google your answer. It is a speech that praises and focuses on the good deeds done by a dead loved one. Helen, hindi po elegy. Jonalyn, hindi po elegy kasi speech. Ang elegy po, poetry. Pasulat. Okay, correct. Yology, correct. A, yology. B, toast. C, rose. D, valediction. The correct answer is yology. From the Greek root, eulogia, which means praise. And logia means speaking. It is a speech that recalls the good deeds of a dead person, usually said at a wake or funeral. Eulogy. 36. Which of the following short stories is noted for its use of local color? I, I, I wish, uh, I don't know, I hope you know, I hope you know, the concept of local color. A. Dahong Palay. B. How my brother Leon brought home his wife. Or a wife. Yes, a wife. Letter C. May they Eve the Tanabata's wife. What is the correct answer? Local color. When you say local color, you you put forward the culture of a particular um, area. Sometimes they call local color regional literature. You do not in the local color you use the local words in your writing. You do not translate. You do although. Your main language in writing is English, but there are certain words that you do not translate anymore and you just use the local, the local word. For example, Baldo went to the Batalan to prepare dinner. Oh, Batalan is the local color here. The writer did not translate the word batalan anymore into English. In, in, uh, instead, he used what we call the concept, the concept of local color or regional literature. Dahong Palay was written by Arturo Rutor. How My Brother Leon Brought Home a Wife was written by Manuel Argilia. May Day Eve was written by Nick Joaquin. And Tanabata's Wife was written by Sinai Hamada. The correct answer is how my brother Leon brought home a wife. Letter B. This is question number 36. How my brother Leon brought home a wife is a short story by Manuel Argilia. And Manuel, please take note of this. This is a common left question. Manuel Argilia is known as the most prominent author who uses local color. Pag local color, automatic, Manuel Argilia yun. He is the master writer as far as local color is concerned. And ano yung pinakasikat na short story ni Manuel Argilia? How my brother Leon brought home a wife. Dinala po ni Leon ang kanyang asawa mula saan? Saan po nagmula yung asawa ni Leon? Dinala po niya sa kanyang hometown. Josh, are you sure nagregkan? Mula Maynila, papuntang nagregkan La Union. Papuntang nagreg. Pumunta sila sa kanyang hometown sa nagreg. Nag na nagreg. Nagregkan, I'm not sure exactly. Nagregkan, pero mula Maynila po sila. Ah, the wife is a city girl. 
Okay, number 37. Okay, here. Local color uses the characteristic appearance, mannerism, speech, and dress of a place for a period. Okay? This is an example of, this is a lifted line. These are lifted lines from Manuel Argilia's How My Brother Leon Brought Home a Wife. She stepped down the caritela of Katsilin. So caritela there is an example of what we call local color. Hindi na po siya na translate sa English. Okay? Number 37, which of the following structures is correct? Okay, just read the options because they, um, they are all the same except for some structures, some conventions in writings. Ano po yung, what is the correct answer here? Macy once said, love is not an emotion, it is a choice. They, they all have the same wordings but different um, use of punctuations. Letter, the correct answer is letter D. Are you sure? Letter, wait, letter A. The correct answer is letter A. Hindi po letter D kasi po sa letter D, love is not an emotion. One sentence. And it is a choice, another sentence. Dapat po dalawang sentences. Pero sa letter D, ginawa lang po, ginawa lang po isang sentence. So that's not the correct answer. The correct answer is letter A. Okay? Letter B is wrong. Why? Kasi po, look at, look at, Look at the, the, the period. Sa labas po siya ng quotation mark. Letter B is wrong because ang period nasa labas ng quotation mark. Dapat po yung placement ng period ganito. Hindi po sa labas. Period first before close quotation. Number 38. Which of the following cannot be considered a characteristic of a topic sentence? A, it is connected to the thesis statement. B, it can be the first sentence of a paragraph. C, it is the main idea of a paragraph. D, it can be the main idea of an essay. What is the correct answer? Which of the following cannot be considered a characteristic of a topic sentence? This is question number 38. Cannot, cannot be considered. When you say topic sentence, it is the main idea of only one, only one paragraph. And the whole essay has many paragraphs. For example, an essay has five paragraphs. So, lima, lima din pong topic sentence. So, the correct answer is letter D. It, it can be the main idea of an essay. Hindi po the whole essay but of only one paragraph, only part of the essay. So that's D. 39. Reading is the process by which a reader extracts visual information from a piece, wait, from a piece of written text. Wait, sorry. And A. Share it to others. B, use it in real life. C, make sense of it. D, keep it for posterity. What is the correct answer? After po you extract the visual information, ano pong gagawin ng reader? Yes, correct. The correct answer is that C, makes sense of it. Okay, number 40. Which of the following English words first came from Odyssey, the literary classic? Sorry, some people are waiting outside. Wait. Which of the following English words first came from Odyssey, the literary classic written by Homer? So, alin po dito ang English words? Alin po sa mga English words na ito ang galing sa Odyssey ni Homer. This is a question on etymology, the origin of words. A teacher, B professor, C instructor, D mentor. 
if you trace the origin of this word, it will bring you back to Homer's Odyssey. Okay, the correct answer is letter D, mentor, right? The word mentor originated from Homer's Odyssey. Mentor, it is widely cited that the concept of mentoring originated with the character of mentor in Homer's Odyssey. Ang pangalan po ng tao, ng character ay si mentor. What about him? In this ancient Greek epic poem dating back around 3,000 years ago, Odysseus entrusts his young son Telemachus to the care of mentor, his trusted companion when he goes to fight in the Trojan War. Remember, aalis po si Odysseus dahil pupunta siya ng giyera. So, he entrusted his son Telemachus sa kanyang trusted friend na si mentor. So, mentoring. To mentor is to guide. To mentor is to help. To mentor is to teach. Unexpectedly, he is away for decades. And during that, uh, wait. And during that time, mentor nurtures and supports the boy. So, that's the concept of mentoring. Forty-one, what is emphasized in the communicative language teaching approach? A, mastery. B, perfection. C, appreciation. B, interaction. What is emphasized in the communicative approach? A, mastery. B, perfection. C, appreciation. B, interaction. Answers, please, in the chat box. This is question number 41. We have nine... Uh, after this, we have nine more. Nine more items. The correct answer is letter D, interaction. Okay, interaction. The means and the goal of language teaching, of language learning and acquisition is interaction. Right? It means we are studying how to speak English because we want to interact. We want to be effective communicators. That's interaction. Next, number 42. Sentences with linking verbs have A, a direct object, B, an indirect object, C, an object of the preposition, D, subject complement. What is the correct answer? Sentences with linking verb. For example, she is, they are. Is and are there are linking verbs. They have what? Direct object, indirect object, object of the preposition, or subject complement. What is the correct answer? Okay, the correct answer is, of course, complement. Subject complement. Letter D here. She is happy. She is your subject. Your linking verb is is. Your subject complement is happy. Okay, so if there is a linking verb, there is a complement, subject complement. Whether it's an adjective complement or a noun complement. Happy here is an adjective complement. But when you say she is a doctor, doctor there is a noun complement. It says we only have one minute left. Um, let's just wait for Zoom. To end, then we will rejoin for the last time. We will rejoin for the last time because we are now in number 41, 42. Okay? Let's just wait for Zoom to end. And we will rejoin for the last time. Time check, it's 8.05. We're supposed to end at 8.00.
Do you still have the energy? Are you still okay? Do you still have all the energy? Hey, for the last time. I also post a lot of review questions in my YouTube channel. Okay, let's continue. New all there. Share screen. Number three. Mentor there. Can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? Okay. Wait, wait. Admit all. Okay, wait. Okay, number 43. Who wrote a popular essay that traces his ancestry and declares that a Filipino is a hero who pledges that he will never rest until he is free? A. Carlos P. Romulo, B. Claro M. Recto, C. Manuel L. Quezon, D. Jose Rizal, who wrote a popular essay that traces his ancestry and declares that a Filipino is a hero who pledges that he will never rest until he is free. Give your answer in the chat, uh, in the chat box. The title of the essay is, I am a Filipino. I am a Filipino, inheritor of a glorious past, hostage to the uncertain future. Who wrote that essay? It, pled, um, it pledges that he will never rest until his country is free. This is number 43. Correct answer is Carlos P. Romulo, letter A. A Filipino diplomat, journalist, and former president of the United Nations General Assembly. The title of the essay is I Am a Filipino. It says, I am a Filipino born of freedom, and I shall not rest until freedom shall have been added unto my inheritance for myself, and my children's children forever. Okay, next. Number 44. It needs the art of teaching. 
A. Education. B. Andragogy. C. Pedagogy. D. Methodology. The Art of Teaching. A. Education. B. Andragogy. C. Pedagogy. D. Methodology. Correct. It's very easy. The answer is pedagogy. Correct. Next, number 45. In an academic text, the thesis statement is usually presented in the abstract or executive summary and is found at the blank of the introduction. A. First part of the intro. Where do you where do you usually find the thesis statement? A first part of the introduction. B middle part of the introduction. C last part of the introduction. Letter D A or B only. Letter E B or C only. What is your answer? A thesis statement is composed of how many sentences? First, let's answer these important questions. A thesis statement is composed of how many sentences? Hmm? One, correct. Just one sentence. Now, what does it state? What does it state? It states the topic or the purpose of your essay or paper. Now, can can you give me the three parts of an academic of an academic text? Any academic text, be it an essay or a report. There are th three parts, uh, introduction, correct, body, and conclusion, correct. Now, correct, correct, Josh, introduction, body, and conclusion. Of these three, where can you find the thesis statement? Is it in the introduction? Correct, in the intro, correct. Now, in the intro, where? First part, middle part, last part. Last part, correct. In the last part, you find the thesis state statement in the last part of the introduction. Letter C. Question number 46. As a literary form, the allegory is much like blank, except in length and complexity of topic. A, an epic. B, a short story. C, a novel. D, parable. Okay? Medyo may kahawig ang allegory sa alin dito. Epic, short story, novel, or parable? It's question number 46. Correct. The correct answer is parable. Both, why? Because both have a hidden meaning. Both have hidden meaning. Both have moral importance. The allegory presents a moral lesson. A parable, too, presents a moral lesson. But in terms of complexity, which is more complex? The allegory or the parable? Ano po yung mas komplikado? Sa structure. Is it the allegory or the parable? Hmm? Ano, mas, ano po yung mas komplikado? Mas complicated po ang allegory because a parable is simpler. Mas simply po yung parable. Mas complicated po ang allegory. Okay? 47. The silent way is the name of a method of language teaching devised by A. Robert Lado, B. Noam Chomsky, C. Stephen Krashen, D. Caleb Gatenyo. The silent way is a method, is the method, is the name of a method of language teaching devised by. Sino po ang main proponent ng silent way? A. Robert Lado, B. Noam Chomsky, C. Stephen Krashen, D. Caleb Gatenyo. Correct answer is? What is the correct answer? Silent way? Caleb Gatenyo or Gatenyo. Okay, he is or he was an Egyptian-born educator. He developed novel and sometimes controversial theories of the learning process. Bakit po 
ang mga dinidevelop niya na theory ay controversial. For example, silent way. Ang silent way po is a controversial uh, method. Imagine silent. You are learning a language pero walang dapat silent ang lahat. Diba? Is it not that controversial? The silent way. It is based on the premise that the teacher should be silent as much as possible in the classroom. But the learner should be wait, encouraged to produce as much language as possible. Okay? The silent way. By Caleb Gatenio or Gatenio. 48. It investigates the process by which readers extract visual information from written text and make sense of it. A. Sociology of reading. B. Psychology of reading. C. History of reading. B. Philosophy of reading. It investigates the process in which the reader extracts visual information what is the answer okay how about others the correct answer is psychology of reading letter b reading psychology or the psychology of the reading process 49 last two items he told me his name, but I, A, I forget, B, ah, sorry, I forget, B, I forgot, C, I have forgotten, D, I had forgotten. The correct answer is, I have given you the correct answer, it's letter C, I have forgotten. It means, the structure here is present perfect. When you say present perfect tense, it's has or have plus PP or past participle. When do we use the present perfect tense? For a past action or a past situation that has its effect now. Have forgotten is a past action, a past situation, and what is the effect now? I cannot remember it. Right? So, I have forgotten. When you say I forgot, you you. Forgot here is a wrong is a wrong choice because it means you remember now because past tense forgot, right? Number 50, last number. According to Maranao, folk tale. This is Philippine literature. This world was created by who created this world according to the Maranao tradition. A. An unknown force, be a great being, see an ordinary mortal, the dinosaurs. According to Maranao folklore, this world was created by A, an unknown force, be a great being, see an ordinary mortal, the dinosaurs. Okay, the correct answer is letter B, a great being. This world was created by a great being. Maranao, the indigenous people living around Lake Lanao. Okay? They're famous. What, what is their famous? The Maranaos have their famous epic. What Can you type the name of the epic? The epic of the Maranaos? Known to be the oldest and the longest of all Philippine oral literatures. Ano pong epic na mga Maranao ang considered the oldest and the longest of all Philippine oral literatures? Can you type your answer? The famous epic of the Maranao people. Hmm? Are you still there? Can you write the name of the epic? Correct. It's the Rangin or the Rangan. You are correct. Correct. Okay. So, your score over 50? Hmm? 
What is your score? I hope you're, well, that's nice. So see you tomorrow at exactly, oh yeah, at exactly 6 p.m. The, uh, the owner, Mam Mek has, the owner, I have given all, all the videos to them already. Okay, so see you and good night, everyone.